thank you guys for, for coming i know it's already 6 p.m and it's it has been a long day but i'm going to make it really quick half an hour tops so my name is Matija Lancharic and I'm going to talk about the art of global launching. It's going to be packed with numbers. I'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, development at Pixel Federation, our soft launch process, global launch strategy, ASO, after global launch numbers, and I'm going to talk about what went wrong, what mistakes we made during the, during the soft launch on, of our first game, and what lessons we learned uh, for a second game, Global Launch. So this is me. I've been in the industry for five years, mostly at Pixel Federation, where I work as a head of mobile marketing. I'm uh, working as a... I'm trying to work as a head of mobile marketing, and I'm responsible for ad networks. Uh, I'm respons responsible for uh, Facebook advertising. I'm responsible for... Google AdWords and stuff like that. I'm talking to uh, the platform managers and that's pretty much it and I'm taking care of ASO as well. So Pixel Federation was founded 2007. Uh, we have 200 employees. We are based in Slovakia. We have one game in soft launch. It was an uh, instant game which we are trying to global launch in the next weeks. And uh, all our games were designed for Facebook Canvas uh, back in days. And now we are trying to port everything to mobile. This is our approach. And have you ever heard of Diggy's Adventure before? Oh, really? All right. Surprise. Um... Our world still has legendary places waiting to be explored. Claim their mysterious treasures in Diggy's Adventure for yourself. But beware, the path is full of puzzles that only few can solve. Your journey awaits. Download Diggy's Adventure in your app store for free today. Yeah, that was our TV spot. We run in the UK and uh, Germany. So... Nick's adventure is a funny little adventure when where uh, people solve lots of brain teasers. It's a story-driven kind of game, and it was launched in 2012, so five years ago. And two years ago, we ported it on mobile. So soft launch. Uh, why are we doing soft launches? So we are trying to in the soft launch. We are trying to lower the risk of failure. Right? We are trying to understand the game performance, A-B test the tutorial, or optimize the first time user experience so we can get uh, the best KPIs we should, we could. And we also collect data from, from players so we can improve the onboarding process of the player. And also we are trying to test as many marketing channels as possible with also, also testing the creatives as well. And in the soft launch, we are trying to decide if we are going to get the, the game live or we are going to kill it. Our approach was like this. We divided the soft launch to three stages. In the, in the first stage, we launched the, the Android build because of the fast iteration. We, well, because of the fast iteration that can be possible on, on Android. We don't want to wait two days until the iOS build is approved. And uh, the main focus of first stage is the tech um, tech stuff. Uh, we want to identify the bugs and all the issues and trying to trying to solve it as fast as possible in the tier four countries. And tier four, I mean Philippines, Mexico, and territories like that where there is like low cost per install. So we don't want to pay two dollars in the UK just to fix bugs in the in the first stage. From the first stage, we move to the second one to include also the, the local markets because we are in Slovakia, so we included Czech and Slovakia, so we, we can test more the first time user ex experience and game balance and economy because the players from Slovakia and Czech Republic are a little bit different than from Philippines. We also added a couple of ad networks to test. And then we moved to stage three, added also iOS, 
so we can we can choose later on which how we can allocate the, the budget for for marketing and for the global launch and also in the in the stage three we are trying to somehow test monetization and improve average revenue per, per user and stuff like that and ultimately we want to do we want to achieve a higher LTV than CPIs so these are the countries we, we picked for for a soft launch obviously Mexico and Philippines in tier 4 then added Czech Republic and Slovakia and then for a third stage we added Canada Australia and Netherlands we picked those countries because we had already some data from from the game before because as I said Digi was already on Facebook Canvas so we wanted to to somehow choose the choose the countries we already have the data and compare it in in mobile market those are the soft launch KPIs we we, we set up and we did this because we we launched train station a couple of years ago and we 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 did like we took the mobile uplift we saw from the launching uh, game uh, from launching train station on on mobile because we we saw mobile uplift and then applied this to to, f to set up the KPIs for Digi's adventure this one okay but after a couple of months in development we launched the build and we saw terrible numbers really loading time one minute internally we call Digi's adventure the loading simulator in the first time because it's like impossible to play but then we actually improved the game we we stayed in soft launch for a couple of months the initial plan was to stay in soft launch just for one month but then we, we saw the the numbers and told talk to to each other like okay this is not going to work let's let's do something with it so after a couple of a couple of months we improved the game and uh, uh, achieve those numbers we we set it up how we did this we we wanted to be sure what what worked and what what worked what worked in terms of uh, retention and uh, what changes we made so we just made up this kind of excel sheet where we where we had all the numbers all the builds so we can tell which change improved the game so these are some soft launch facts. Okay. Then uh, creative assets. During the soft launch, we we started uh, testing multiple creatives: static banners, carousel, canvas, whatever we we wanted, and it's possible on Facebook. And we were able to decrease the CPIs from three dollars to fifty cents, just by testing multiple formats of of creatives. It's like really huge decrease, right? Which one do you think is the the best creative from these two? Why do you think so? Yeah, actually, it is the the best one, and it's just like five year old screenshot of the from the game, and our graphic guy just uh, added the the water there. But what we found out that it's working really well. It's the combination of of headline on the 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 question with with the text. That no no riddle that can be solved, and then there is you can 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 you solve it? This worked the best in in the soft launch. Okay, how many of you guys are doing ASO in, in your company? Very good. As you already know, there's a bunch of things you can test, icons, screenshots, uh, feature graphic and stuff like that. Also on uh, iOS. So in, in soft launch, we found out that our conversion rate is pretty solid. We're like, okay, it's, it's good. We are not going to do anything about it. So we that we've done like zero test and it, nothing because we we told ourselves like okay we we should focus more on uh, 
test testing tutorials and in-game things. But then, after the global launch, we got scared because the conversion rate dropped dramatically. It was, of course, because of the featuring in tier four countries like India and stuff like that. But still, it was quite scary. And so, the, so we we talked to talk and within the marketing team and started to work on the improving the conversion rate, which we achieved, but it was after the global launch. And nowadays, we have 40% 40, 40 conversion rate in, in the US, which is our main market. Perfect, right? But nothing would be achievable without great analytics guys, right? Uh, we really work uh, closely with our BI guys. Uh, Every game team has its own dedicated BI person, game, anal game analyst, and uh, on marketing we have two actually. We also have uh, our own BI system. That is everything we need. It's like uh, spend, revenues, it's uh, CPI, average revenue per user, and also there is a score, which is something like LTV, but in our own way. We are uh, optimizing every every campaign towards the score which is a 12 month profit and um, it's working pretty well for us we are doing this on the campaign level then we can go to the global launch and uh, there was a we we decided to go with the 200k spend during the global launch worldwide but focus on our tier one countries US Germany France and uh, UK because we we saw the there is a monetization potential, so we want to focus on ROI, not the chart position, because we don't have any, we didn't have enough money, right? And we chose Facebook because we have our own team, eight eight person. We have our own Facebook representative. We are really close relationship with them, and you know it's like best quality. Targeting is amazing, so Facebook was was the way. And then we launched the game, we saw huge, huge numbers, 26 cents CPIs in, in US, which was amazing. We never seen never seen that. So we were wondering like, okay, should we increase the budget? So we, we sat down with the C-level guys and, and trying to, to figure out what to do next. So we decided to spend as, as much money as possible. Our CEO had to go to the bank because we didn't have enough money on the advertising account and we needed to transfer the funds, but uh, first, world, first world problems, right? But still, didn't come with that. And uh, since we launched Digi's Adventure, it was huge, Im amazing results. We, had, we got re-featured on Google Play, Amazon and Apple as well, doubled the day use, tripled the revenues, and got more than 10 million installs since the global launch. Uh, I think you can clearly see when we global launched. All those spikes are our own live apps. We have been doing this since, I don't know, a long time ago when live ops didn't even existed, I guess. But it's like our own way. We Every month we have uh, uh, events like uh, Christmas event and stuff like that, but also the, there is a game promotion tied to the event, and you can see that every time we push the push the event out, and we have the the promotion there, the revenue spikes every time. And like I said uh, before the slide before, it, we got like uh, the record of net revenues on dates. It was 180k a day, which was perfect. This is the other uh, chart. The the purple something it's uh, it's Amazon. We didn't launch it simultaneously during uh, with the uh, Apple and, and Google, and that was one mistake we made because Amazon is doing really really well with Digi's Adventure, and we are spending right now at around 200k a month on Amazon. Yes, we see that up, uh, like uh, almost twice as high as on iOS. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. Like I, I heard that a couple of times, but it's true. <laughs> okay, and we are really working hard on Diggy's Adventure, and the the game is is growing since we launched it. Uh, 
in March we got a revenue record two month two millions net revenue. So the game is still growing after the global launch. Right. Have you ever heard of Seaport? Whoa, nice. Perfect. It's great to hear that. Our fleet needs a capable captain to lead it and build the world's finest seaport. Uncharted seas are waiting to be discovered. First, build your home port harbor. Then choose the best ships from history for your mighty fleet. Trade exotic goods with merchants and famous explorers from around the world. Are you the right captain to conquer the mighty seas and create your seaport empire? Download Seaport in your app store for free today. Okay, so this is Seaport. It's a game about developing your port, collecting ships, and you can explore unknown lands. And uh, it was also live bef live on Facebook Canvas, so the soft launch plan was easy. Improve the first time user experience, A-B test tutorials, and test as, as many marketing channels as possible with testing creatives as well. Well, actually with Seaport we didn't even ha have the tutorial before we, got, we went on mobile, because why, you know? So it was really a testing if tutorial tutorial is going to improve the metrics or not. So luckily we implemented the tutorial. And as you can see on the beginning we didn't have anything in the game. Then luckily we implemented tutorial, couple of versions, tested, improved the game and improved the metrics, which was really good. Actually those metrics are even better than Diggy's Adventure. We also we also picked uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia, but this time we decided to go for uh, UK, France, and Denmark because all the time everybody is like soft launching in in Canada, which is starting to be kind of packed, and high, there you can see the high CPIs over there. So we decided to go with the tier one countries that we can. We can scale, which is UK. We saw uh, great numbers in France and, and Denmark uh, for the Canvas version, so that's why we decided to do, th do so. And we spent a lot of money in soft launch, but that's why that's uh, because of all the testing we did. We started the test in in October on Android, and then, as you can see, the numbers are getting better month after month. And then we tested all all the stuff and then moved to to iOS. That's why we got even profitable in, in soft laundry, which we didn't see before with Diggy's Adventure. We also tested uh, a lot of creatives. These are just a couple of examples. The, the middle one is working the best. Like every time we use cargo ships in, in creatives, it's, it's working really good. Well, I know if you can, if you can see the the truck moving like that, we we really like the the players are started to to comment that in in the comment section of like why is the truck moving all the time like that? It doesn't make any sense. But that actually helped us decrease the CPIs because of the f uh, positive reactions and stuff like that. that Facebook like Facebook likes actually. So uh, that's why we decreased the CPIs as well, but testing, uh, we were testing a lot. Uh, well, I, I would say like make absurd creatives and it's, that's the way to go. Okay, uh, just a sec. So, uh, the, the Seaport Global Launch strategy was to spend at least one million. We, we got prepared this time. And uh, also we wanted to, to focus on US, uh, Germany and France, UK and Denmark, just five countries, but eventually also spend uh, worldwide. So we, like I said, uh, top five countries and then started uh, wanted to cover the Europe, APEC and just worldwide for a global launch. We decided to go for iOS 
more than, than Google Play because we saw great results on iOS, not on Google Play. And the optimization, optimization strategy was to start with installs and then slowly move to, to purchase optimization and then value after a couple of weeks after the global launch. In, in soft launch, we, we tested a lot of, lot of marketing channels, but this time we went with, uh, not just with Facebook, because eventually we, we saw that the Facebook strategy wasn't really helpful. It was kind of kind of bad after the after the global launch. But so this time we wanted to choose more channels. We also did TV spots in in Germany and France for global launch, and decided to go with Wangle, Iron Source, and Unity for uh, for a global launch. And also what we didn't do with the, with Diggies and and Transition before, we we included the the community. We posted a couple of, uh, we worked with community ambassadors, tried to, to post the, as many social media fan page posts as possible, and also we, we did in-game promo with uh, train station and digging. So cross-promotion we didn't do before, but now we, we did that and we saw great numbers from that. And I, so, like I said, with Diggy, we didn't do anything, and then after the global launch, we saw that it was a huge mistake, and since that, we improved the conversion rate. So we imagine what could be, what the results we, we could achieve we, if we d did that uh, in, in soft launch, right? It's 40% conversion rate in US, amazing. Oh, that's the, those numbers. So we did this with uh, with Seaport, and we try to do that as, as soon as possible in soft launch. We went to soft launch in September and improved the results uh, afterwards. And, but yeah, and how we how we did that? Simply uh, in soft launch, you need to test at least icons, screenshots, and feature images. That's the the must, and we we saw that. We increase of conversion after we, we tested the screenshot and uh, icons as well and there was a huge improvement with feature graphic for sure. Those, th those three things are the must for a soft launch. And have you, are you doing re any re-engagement right now? Really? Okay. Good for you. Because we didn't do that in, in the past because of like, you know, like decision was made five couple of years ago with like re-engagement is doing nothing so why why should we do that but then in soft launch we we sat down with the BI guys and try to do it smart these are just two two examples of, of a test group test groups we, we used and we saw a really huge uplift in in numbers so we decided to do that continuously after the global launch and we are doing it right now and we are starting to explore out of Facebook and trying to do that with Addictive. We'll see what happens in the future. So the global launch date, what happened after the global launch with Seaport? Yay, it was good. Actually it was better than expected because uh, the revenues went crazy. We get featured on Google Play, Amazon, and, and iOS, and the featureings were really, really strong, and uh, we tripled the day U. But the ROI wasn't as good as with uh, with Diggy's Adventure. But we got from 200,000 revenues to 600, and then 800, just uh, after the global launch, which is really great, and we didn't expect that. And as I said, cross promotion. We we didn't do that in in the past because like game teams were really cautious about like sending our own players to our own next game. But still, it's we are the same company, right? So we need to be really smart of doing that. So we did this with uh, with Seaport and saw really great numbers. Like the the cross promotion average revenue per user were was, was 2.7 euros, and for UA installs it was 0 0.85 which is really great but we did this just for a couple of yep no not at all we actually saw that the, the players started to pay 
uh, in two games. Yeah, it, exactly. And it was like just for a couple of days, it was really simple implementation. We just implemented like one banner in in the news feed, news for a train station and digs digs adventure. And now we are trying to do it more sophisticated because of of this is like the that, that was the that was the main lesson we learned during the the cross promotions we saw in the, with the seaport and uh yeah just some some charts we we cross promoted mainly u s u k germany france just the, the the big markets and that's why we we saw the huge uh, average revenue per user. So I think the main takeaways from this this talk should be like the soft launch is really really powerful process. You can uh, you should really you should really embrace that. You should work with ASO from the first point in soft launch. Test creatives as many as possible and channels as well. And please do re engagement. And that's it. Thank you very much. I'm happy. I'm happy to take any questions if you have some. Yep. Um, hey man, hey. Um, maybe I missed that part, but would you mind giving us some context of uh, how much did it cost to produce those games? I mean, the the, the um, development team size, the the time frame. Oh yeah, that, that wasn't there. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I don't have exact number of uh, how how much money it cost, but uh, the Diggis Adventure team is it started like 40 people at the beginning. Now there is 60, I guess, after two years of uh, being live. And Seaport team it's around 20 people right now. So I don't know about the development cost, but maybe I can I can ask my my colleagues and. Send it over to you later on. How often did you release the, the game during the soft launch? It was every sprint, the new version? It was uh, every, I think, every two weeks. That was uh, the cadence of the new builds. In the soft launch, right now we are doing like content updates every week, but uh, the ever the build new build is going every month. And and when were you localizing the game? Uh, the game is localized in 18 languages. I guess that's uh, that was taken from the Facebook version. Exactly. Any more questions? So thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.